The calendar marks Christmas Eve. Across California, the ordinary holiday hush is shattered. In the space of a minute, a furious wall of water breaks through, swallowing roads, flooding entire neighborhoods, and pushing thousands into urgent crisis. This is not a typical seasonal rain shower. For many in California, the holiday season has arrived under emergency alerts instead of festive lights. A powerful storm driven by an atmospheric river is pounding the state, turning celebrations into cautions and travel plans into evacuations. The calendar marks Christmas Eve. Across California, the ordinary holiday hush is shattered. In the space of a minute, a furious wall of water breaks through, swallowing roads, flooding entire neighborhoods, and pushing thousands into urgent crisis. This is not a typical seasonal rain shower. This is a flood emergency unlike any California has seen in years, one driven by a relentless atmospheric river, miles wide and loaded with Pacific moisture. The National Weather Service is ringing alarms for downtown Los Angeles. The San Fernando Valley is bracing. Rural communities and sprawling suburbs alike find themselves backed up against a rising tide that refuses to recede. Every hour brings new images, streets transformed into rivers, cars half-submerged beneath churning brown torrents, and local officials racing to shut highways before the next surge overtakes them. In Southern California, neighborhoods that once looked forward to dry winter holidays are now watching as creeks overspill their banks and slick mudslides threaten the edges of backyards. The Christmas lights still glow, but they flicker beneath gray clouds, their reflections rippling over unfamiliar lakes where asphalt should have been. These floods do not come as a gradual escalation. Their arrival is violent, catching the unwary off guard, sweeping away any sense of safety in moments. Meteorologists speak with growing urgency. Scientists and geologists are glued to real-time data, parsing subtle shifts in moisture, pressure, and ground saturation. Each new report names a new town in distress. And as one wave of disaster recedes, another storm looms just off the coast, promising to reload the cycle. How did California, a state so familiar with drought, come to face floodwaters on a scale that threatens to redefine the season? And what mysteries does the land itself conceal beneath these sudden deluges that make each flood unlike the last? Chapter 1 Atmospheric Rivers Unleashed What turns a routine rainstorm into a deluge strong enough to paralyze California on Christmas? The answer is a phenomenon both ancient and newly dangerous, atmospheric rivers. Picture the Pacific, vast, restless, and rich in warmth and vapor. Now imagine that water, gathered by shifting winds and packed into a concentrated band of furious moisture, hundreds of miles long. These fast-moving bands are called atmospheric rivers, and they deliver the Pacific's moisture to California not as gentle rain, but as torrents that stress the limits of the land. Atmospheric rivers aren't rare. Each winter they strike the West Coast, carrying moisture amounts that can rival the Mississippi River, an invisible flood in the sky. But what sets this season apart is their relentless pace. As soon as one river makes landfall, another follows close behind, soaking saturated hillsides, overwhelming river channels, and filling the streets of Los Angeles and the San Fernando Valley with inches of rain in hours. Why do atmospheric rivers sometimes settle over the same region long enough to cause havoc? The answer lies in the upper atmosphere, systems of pressure that can lock these moisture bands in place, forcing them to dump incomparable volumes over a single area. It's a disaster not just of water, but also of timing, a convergence that was once rare, but is now becoming disturbingly routine. If a river can carve a canyon over centuries, what happens when a river appears in the sky and unleashes its power in a single day? Chapter 2 California's Drought Paradox Could a state long plagued by drought now be brought to its knees by too much water? This is the California Paradox. Ground that was hard and cracked from years of dry summers and stubborn drought can no longer soak up the rain it so badly needs. When the first storm fronts of the atmospheric river make landfall, the earth itself betrays its legacy of scarcity. Instead of absorbing the influx, it acts as a shield, casting water skyward and sideways, turning every street into a stream, every low point into a lake. Why does parched ground repel water so fiercely? Scientists trace the phenomenon to soil structure. 
During long dry spells, the ground compacts and loses many of the pores and channels that would otherwise soak up rain. So when heavy rains come, especially the kind delivered by an atmospheric river, the water can no longer seep in. Instead, it sheets over the surface, racing to lower ground. California's struggle with one crisis has become the seed for another. The ground yearns for water, yet when deliverance arrives from above, it can be disastrous. In the contest between drought and flood, the loser is not always clear. But moments like these lay bare the cost of imbalance. If drought made California's earth forget the memory of moisture, what happens when floodwaters force it to remember all at once? Chapter 3 Geology's Secret Fault Lines Every flood shifts the landscape, but what lies beneath often matters more than what happens on the surface. After each Christmas storm, scientists revisit maps of fault lines and ancient floodplains crisscrossing California. Here, the expertise of geologists shines, reminding us that under the most modern cities are scars left by time and nature. What hidden wounds does the ground bear, waiting for rain to expose them? Researchers pore over seismic charts, overlaying records of earthquakes with present-day flood maps. When rain overtops riverbanks and saturates hills, it finds ancient channels, dry riverbeds, once buried beneath concrete, are suddenly resurrected. Water, it turns out, is as powerful a force for shaping geology as wind or tremor. It's not only the visible landslides or shifting sands that tell the story. Sometimes a sinkhole opens overnight, a backyard slumps toward a freeway, or a road collapses without warning. Each of these is a reminder that California's surface is temporary, always at the mercy of what lies beneath. If the twisting earth can fracture the state in a moment, what mysteries wait below the floodwaters, biding their time for the next surge? Chapter 4 Mudslides, Nature's Sudden Avalanche How can storms that bring life also sweep it away in a heartbeat? Mudslides help write California's flood legacy. As warm rain pummels hillsides stripped of vegetation by wildfire, gravity makes its move. Quickly, whole slopes liquefy, rushing downwards with speed and violence that cannot be outrun or predicted. The warnings from meteorologists and first responders come swiftly, but the destruction can be total. Hillsides that were green and stable just weeks before now collapse, carrying trees, cars, and the remnants of homes into ravines or roads below. The science is simple but merciless. When soil is saturated, it loses strength. When plant roots are gone, little resists the pull of gravity. Why do some hills stay in place while others disappear in minutes? The balance is determined by myriad variables, soil chemistry, slope angle, vegetation, and rainfall rates. Across California's mountains, this balance shifts with every storm. If wildfires stripped away California's natural armor, what does the future hold when every hard rain brings the risk of a deadly mudslide? Chapter 5 Earthquakes in the Flood What happens when one force of nature sets the stage for another? California's danger is not only water, but also quaking earth. State geologists have long studied the intersection of seismic and hydrologic events. How do storms and floodwaters influence the sleeping giants below? Liquefaction, the transformation of solid ground into a sludge-like slurry when saturated soils are shaken by earthquakes, is a key risk. During normal weather, soils resist motion. But heavy rains bring saturation, and after Christmas storms, the smallest tremor can cause whole neighborhoods to shift unexpectedly. Even without earthquakes, floods lay bare the vulnerabilities of fault zones. Water seeps into cracks and over time can lubricate fault lines, a process that geologists continue to study for its potential impact. This is evidence seen in the legacy of past events. If stormwater and tectonic stress serve as unwitting partners, where is the next surprise waiting beneath the surface? Chapter 6 Science Behind Flash Floods Why do some storms escalate into catastrophic floods in mere moments? The anatomy of a flash flood is ruthless. Atmospheric rivers can release inches of rain per hour, and California's urban landscapes, sealed in concrete, leave water with few paths to escape. Each drop gathers, pouring toward the lowest point, 
a cul-de-sac, a freeway, a subway tunnel. The choreography is chaos. Storm drains overflow, and official warnings pour in faster than water recedes. The National Weather Service issues widespread urban flooding alerts, as rain arrives not as drizzle, but as a sudden unyielding downpour. What makes some places so vulnerable? The answer traces to infrastructure, outdated storm drains, buried creeks, and city planning choices made long before the scale of today's storms. Some neighborhoods are at higher risk, for reasons that sometimes date back decades. If the mistakes of urban design amplify flood risk, can science and planning rewrite the rules before the next surge? Chapter 7 The Cost of Underestimating Rain If warning signs are clear, why does disaster so often strike? Time and again, Californians underestimate the strength and speed of holiday floods. Cars are stranded midstream, families find themselves surrounded by rising water. The National Weather Service has adopted sharper language, labeling threats extreme, but old habits die hard. What draws people toward danger? Partly it's routine. Last week's rain did no harm, so this week's downpour may not seem different. But atmospheric rivers do not respect the past. Every ignored warning, every moment's delay, multiplies the risk. The only constant is unpredictability. Today, real-time mapping and non-stop alerts can help, but they do not reach everyone in time, and warnings may not always seem urgent until it's too late. For some, only tragedy is persuasive. If each storm carves its lessons in debris and heartbreak, what will it take for the next warning to be heeded? Chapter 8 Data Streams – The Buoy's Warnings Can tomorrow's disaster be forecast by the signals floating just offshore? California's storm watchers now depend on more than forecasts. They place trust in the National Data Buoy Center's network of floating sentinels along the Pacific coast. These buoys are silent witnesses, constantly reading and relaying real-time data, wave height, period, and direction. As Christmas storms close in, the numbers spike, wave periods lengthen, wave heights soar, and the incoming energy written as data translates to urgent warnings for coastal towns, harbors, and cities. These signals are life-saving. Every spike recorded by a buoy triggers a new alert, providing data that can mean the difference between preparation and calamity. Satellites and radar, together with buoys, form a digital shield, giving authorities and citizens precious time to act. If the ocean is always sending its warnings, will we learn to listen before the next wave arrives? Chapter 9 Modern Flood Mapping How can you draw a map that predicts disaster before it strikes? Modern flood mapping tries to bring sense to the chaos, blending satellite images, topographic data, storm models, and rainfall history to sketch out risk in real time. Engineers and scientists feed these variables into dynamic models, mapping not just what might flood, but exactly when and how deep water will be at a given address. These new maps can now shift as a storm unfolds, turning rows of houses or whole neighborhoods from green to red when new threats emerge. Maps alone can't stop water, but they can offer what's most precious during a flood, extra time. Warnings go out with more accuracy. Evacuations are targeted sooner, and rescue teams know where to focus resources. If information travels faster than water, how do we guarantee warnings reach every door? Chapter 10. Big Sur and Coastal Fury. Is California's coastline a barricade or a warning sign? Nowhere is the Pacific's intensity clearer than along Big Sur, or the beaches stretching north to Oregon and Washington. During major storms, massive swells slam into cliffs and beaches, overtopping seawalls, eroding bluffs, and at times, sweeping away parking lots in a single surge. The coastal struggle is inescapable. Harbors all along the shoreline freeze operations, reinforce moorings, and brace as unprecedented waves bear down. These moments are a modern echo of natural processes that have carved California's shape for tens of thousands of years, brought to full speed by today's atmospheric rivers. Sometimes it's not the highest visible wave that does the most damage. It's the unseen lift and force under the surface. The undertow or rip current magnifies the threat, making the ocean's power felt far inland, beyond where the highest tides reach. If every storm redraws the shoreline a little, how long before the state's defenses need to be reimagined altogether? Chapter 11 Urban Vulnerability Why do cities, symbols of imagination and progress, become disaster zones when the rains come? 
California's urban centers, designed and built in an era of different weather patterns, are finding themselves ill-prepared for this new reality. Downtown Los Angeles and sprawling suburbs are not isolated by geography but by choices of design. Decades of concrete, endless roadways, and rapid growth have produced vast swaths of land where water cannot soak in but must be rushed away by overmatched storm drains. Why has urban planning lagged behind the threats its populations now encounter? Past priorities, rooted in the assumption of drought, left little margin for floods. That oversight is costly, in property, time, and sometimes, in life. If each square mile of pavement adds to the risk, can cities adapt as fast as the storms themselves? Chapter 12. King Tides, Risk Multiplied. How can the ocean's natural cycle further magnify storm impacts? King tides, predictable extreme tidal swings, strike when the sun, moon, and earth align. When they happen alongside atmospheric rivers, disaster risk multiplies. As king tides roll in with winter storms, the result can be catastrophic. Water overtops traditional flood lines, parking lots vanish beneath waves, and low-lying neighborhoods face sudden inundation, sometimes surprising even those familiar with local tides. These events aren't new, but their timing with modern storms makes the stakes much higher. The collaboration of tidal and meteorological forces reshapes not just coastlines, but how communities must plan to survive. If cosmic rhythms amplify every flood, how do we account for future risks written in both sky and tide? Chapter 13. The Myth of the Tsunami why do every powerful surge and flooded street conjure up fears of an even greater disaster, a tsunami? Social media and frantic footage often blur the lines. But the science is clear. While California is at risk for tsunamis, the current floods are not from seismic events, but from wind and weather. The National Weather Service stresses there are no tsunami warnings in effect. The destruction comes from heavy rainfall, overflowing rivers, and storm surges not from deep ocean earthquakes or underwater landslides. Understanding this difference is critical, to prevent panic, but also to respond correctly. Still, whenever water appears in unlikely places, ancient fears surface. But to misunderstand a storm surge or flash flood as a tsunami can be dangerous, a distraction from the true peril. If the real risk comes from above, how do we better educate ourselves to respond to weather, not just earthquakes? Chapter 14. Floods and Emergency Response When every moment counts, can preparation outpace calamity? California's first responders are stretched thin during these floods, patrolling coastlines, closing harbors, reinforcing infrastructure, and conducting water rescues as streets vanish beneath waves. Every incident, every narrow escape, reveals both strengths and vulnerabilities. The National Weather Service urges, stay off rocks and jetties, keep away from rushing water, and never turn your back on the ocean. But with simultaneous threats, flood, mudslide, storm surge, managing it all demands speed, planning, and public cooperation. Emergency crews rely on up-to-the-minute data, but their greatest tool may be community trust. Authorities depend on residents to follow evacuation orders and heed warnings. Yet every disaster contains stories of those who hesitated and paid the price. If the line between chaos and safety is counted in minutes, what can be done to make sure each new warning is the one that saves a life? Chapter 15. California's Changing Equation What does it mean for a place defined by drought and fire, rain and flood, to face a cycle of disasters growing more intense each year? California's Christmas floods are a sign that nature's balance is never fixed. The legacy of every storm is more than measured in property loss. It shows up in new policy, in smarter technology, and in the land itself. As each atmospheric river carves its path, Californians must answer harder questions. Can planning and science keep up with the tempos of change? Will infrastructure adjust to new realities, or will the story of adaptation be written by each successive storm? On this Christmas Eve, as storms once more pound the coast and waters fill communities young and old, the pressure to adapt is stronger than ever. Science will map out the risks, but only collective awareness, preparation, and action will determine the outcome. The floods, born of wind, water, and land, are only part of a future that is still arriving, one storm at a time.